What's up everybody, Nosy Boy here, and I'm back with episode 2 of Star Wars Battlefront Character Concepts. Last week we covered Jango, and this week we're covering Mace Windu. I was pretty surprised to see Windu be Anakin, honestly, but it's a very welcome surprise because I love Windu and this was a ton of fun to make. By the way, we did break 2,000 subscribers since the Jango Fett video, and we are so close to 2,500. Thank you all so much. I, I am not worthy at all. I, I'm at a loss for words. However, thank yous aside, you're all here to see how I would put Mace Windu inside of Battlefront 2, since DICE doesn't plan on doing that anytime soon. Once again, I'll just do it for them out of the kindness of my heart. Without further ado, let's get into this video. Starting with the basics, Windu's default appearance would be his tannish Jedi outfit from episodes 2 and 3 without the robes or hood, basically what you see him in the arena with. Windu would have a base health of 800 and move slower than the other light side heroes. Mace Windu can take a whopping 250 damage before he starts to lose permanent health that he cannot recover. Without a proper tank, the light side has a problem dealing with characters like Darth Vader, but Mace Windu is going to be the perfect counter to that. Mace Windu's movement speed will only be slightly faster than Vader's, making him the second slowest lightsaber user in the entire game. While Windu's character can be quick in the Clone Wars, it's more with his character in the movies and the games to make his movements slower and more deliberate, so that's what we're doing here. Windu's weapon is his infamous purple lightsaber, and his swings will do 120 damage just like Vader's. Swings will be slow, much like Vader's, but be highly effective in killing opponents due to the high damage. Windu will have a lot of stamina to block with, as this will add to his tankiness even more. There's not a whole lot to know about Windu's lightsaber, as most lightsabers perform the exact same way, but with slight variations in damage and stamina. However, I do want to mention I picture Windu holding his lightsaber with two hands just because that's just what comes to my mind. I always picture Windu holding it with two hands. Already on to the abilities, Mace Windu's first ability is Shatterpoint. It's his bread and butter from Legends and Canon. His Shatterpoint ability lets him see the weak points in the Force and in his foes. Enemies will take an extra 15% damage from all of his lightsaber attacks and an extra 20% damage from his abilities. Shatterpoint also increases Windu's ability to defend himself from incoming damage. This gives him 10% extra resistance to damage. This ability lasts for 10 seconds and has a 20 second cooldown. For those of you who've noticed the obvious, Windu Shatterpoint is the light side equivalent to Focused Rage. I didn't want Windu to play just like Darth Vader with a purple lightsaber, but having a tanky hero that's incredible at destroying other heroes is an unfair advantage for the dark side. My goal to remedy this was Windu. But then again, I don't want him to play just like a Vader clone. This is why this ability doesn't give Windu health, has a higher cooldown, and abilities are affected as well. Without the health buff that uh, Focused Rage is known to give Vader, Windu's best option at staying alive is simply to kill nearby enemies or block their fire, and losing too much health would be very problematic because Windu has to be up close. One use of Shatterpoint, unlike anything in the game, however, is its ability to break stuns. Windu can activate Shatterpoint to instantly get out of any stun in the game, and if Windu gets stunned while in Shatterpoint, he only gets stunned for half the time, this is really only crazy in Heroes vs. Villains, but I'm so fucking tired of the meta being stun the enemies, stun them again, stun them again, stun them again, stun them- I'm done with it! No! Windu flips that shit on its head and directly counters the lamest playstyle in the entire game. God, thank God for Windu, and me for designing him. Windu's next ability is Force Slam. He slams his hand into the ground, causing a shockwave around him to damage and knock down nearby enemies. This attack does 125 damage to enemies within the radius of the shockwave. Enemies standing just outside the range of the ability won't fall down, but will take 50 damage. 
Windu is buff as fuck. Mace Windu can activate this ability while in the air, coming down with even more force than his grounded version. The aerial version will do an extra 50 damage to enemies, increase the radius by 10%, and enemies slightly outside of his range will take an extra 20 damage. The Shatter Point version of this ability does 20% more damage, so his ground numbers will change to 150 inside the radius and 60 right outside of it, while his aerial version's numbers will change to 210 in the radius and 84 right outside. This is a buff fucking ability. If you can't tell, Windu's really slow and really good up close, so his abilities hit hard. His ability would be unable to kill heavies unless he has both Shatter Point and lands an Aerial Slam, so it's not that crazy. Force Slam would share the range of Chewie's Default Slam as their similar moves, and it would be on a 20 second cooldown. Also to keep advanced Windu players from Instant Air Force Slamming, which would be an impressive strategy and a smart one to use, he cannot use the Slam in the air until he's on his way down after the peak of his jump. His jump is actually going to be the highest in the game uh, in terms of light side characters to help with this. So Windu can jump higher than any other light side saber user, but this means the peak of his jump is higher, meaning Force Slam isn't going to be instantly destroying everybody. Overall, this is an extremely powerful ability, but Windu needs to be pretty close to use it. The startup is similar to Luke's Repulse, except, you know, this one kills enemies and doesn't just, like, knock them on the ground for them to just kill Luke. It's a good version of Repulse. A really good version of Repulse. The next ability is Heavy Swing. Mace Windu is known to have some devastating power behind his blows. Just like me when it comes to shirtless Darth Maul. <laughs> Vote for him in the Reddit link in the description below. And this is where Heavy Swing comes in with said devastating power. Essentially, think of it like Darth Vader and Luke Swing from the previous game, but in Battlefront 2 and on Mace Windu. Windu would swing with all of his might, dealing 240 damage to anybody caught within it. This is essentially double his normal swing, and it's fucking buff. As I said, slow but powerful. Windu's reel back and follow through take time, however, giving him a half of a second startup and recovery. If the enemy is blocking with a lightsaber, however, this has a new effect. While the enemy will take no damage if they block the ability, it leaves them unable to swing a lightsaber for one second and unable to block for the next three. This attack does a monstrous 288 damage with the Shatter Point buff, and with Shatter Point has a new secret effect. Enemies will take a harder hit, adding a second before they can swing their lightsaber or block, making the numbers 2 seconds and 4 seconds respectively. It has a slow startup and Mace Windu makes an audible grunt, giving visual and audio cues to hit the dodge button. Heroes are also always revealed on the minimap, so players who get caught by surprise deserve to be destroyed by this strike. It has a 20 second cooldown, so Mace Windu can't abuse it constantly. Now this ability is going to be the one noobs cry about because they can't hide and block, and it forces them to find out other ways to avoid the hit. So enjoy racking up free kills and inhaling the sweet, sweet salt of these crying children in Heroes vs. Villains. You're welcome. Now for Windu star cards, I wanted to base some of them off of other characters' star cards. A lot of characters in this game share star cards with different names, so if Mace Windu had a star card that was like somebody else's, it would make him feel like a part of Battlefront 2 even more. So that's how I approached it this time. I still really like these, and I hope you enjoy them because I think they'll make him really, really fun. Windu's first star card is Bad Mother Fodder. Mace Windu has increased maximum health. Every tank needs this card. It's so necessary. This is going to give Windu a total of like 950 which is great because he doesn't have a health boosting ability, so this just helps his tankiness even more. At common, it's 50 extra health. At epic, it's 150, like I said. So a very good card, and it's going to make him very, very strong. 
Perfect Deflection is up next, and I really like it because it's one of my favorite Luke cards. Blocked Blaster shots are deflected super accurately, but drain more stamina. At common, it drains 18% more, but at epic, it's only 10% more. I like this because Windu's a tank that relies on his blocking a lot, so if it's blocking turned into his only good range option, I just think it makes Windu that much stronger, and I could definitely see people using it really, really well. Up next is Jedi Master. The recharge rate is faster for Mace Windu's abilities. At common, this is 5%, and at epic, this is 10%. It's like Darth Maul's card, but I thought it'd be good here, because that means more shatter point and more force slams. And that just means more kills for Windu. And I'm a fan of seeing, like, 90 kill streaks with heroes. I don't think everybody should be able to get them, but I think this card will really help you if you want to rack up a ton, a ton of kills. Next up is Jedi General. Whenever Windu defeats an enemy trooper, he regains 20 health. Whenever Windu defeats an enemy villain, he regains even more. Common 40 health, epic 100. You all know this card. It's the card that should be on every single character. Everybody needs health back. Windu's gonna have it. It's It just makes sense. It's only fair. Okay, so this next star card is probably his best one. It's called Sustain Shatterpoint. Every kill Windu gets while in Shatterpoint slightly extends the duration. However, the cooldown is increased by 5 seconds. At common, you get 5% extended duration. and epic, it's a full 20%. Every kill gives you 2 seconds more in Shatterpoint. I don't know what else I have to do to sell it. That's, that's just it. It's a strong as fuck card for a strong character. Devastating Slam is up next, and it's pretty decent. Every kill inside a Force Slam decreases the cooldowns of Windu's abilities. At common, it's 1 second, and at epic, it's a 3 second decrease. This is balanced because you can't use Force Slam while in Shatterpoint to get Shatterpoint cooldown. When Force Slam is at its strongest, you cannot get cooldown for Shatterpoint because the duration is not over and the cooldown hasn't begun. So if you want it to get more Shatter Points, you're going to have to use it without it and risk not killing heavies or all the enemies in the radius. This is how the star card is balanced. His final slam card is Forceful Slam. Mace Windu sends enemies flying with Force Slam, but the ability now does less damage to compensate. Basically, it launches people like Force Push and Repulse does. Common is 25% less and Epic is 10% less damage. So, it's not that much less damage, and I can see this being really helpful on Heroes vs. Villains maps like Kashyyyk and Bespin, Naboo, the ones where there's giant pits for people to fall down. This is a very good ability. Next, we have Master Duelist. Mace Windu's Heavy Swing now damages blocking opponents. At Common, this is 20 damage. At Epic, this is 50 damage. If there was ever a card to make blocking bad... It is this one. Mace Windu punishes lame play, and this just adds to Mace Windu's punishing and devastating personality. I really like this one just because I like aggressive and fun play, not stun and block. So I just wanted to take away a little bit more from blocking opponents and get make them use sidesteps more. and Make them use more skill to avoid attacks. Finally, we have Crippling Blow. Mace Windu's Heavy Swing disables the effects of star cards that help with health for 10 seconds if landed, but has a higher cooldown to compensate. At Common, this is a 35 second cooldown. At Epic, this is a 28 second cooldown. This is basically going to shut down the health cards that give people health as they kill people. It'll shut down Vader's card where he gets more base health, it basically just cripples the opponents as it implies. It is a very good attack, but it has to land. It cannot be blocked or it does not work. You guys already know this is my favorite part of the video. It's skins and emotes. Windu actually has quite a few options, and I wasn't expecting that. And they're all canon. For the first two, Windu can have his robe. One skin with the hood up and one with the hood down. Very simple, but they both look incredible in-game. Secondly, we have Clone Wars Mace Windu with the partial clone armor on his Jedi robes. 
This would basically just be the clone gauntlets he has. This would probably be his most popular skin and one of the more expensive ones. Another canon look would be Mace Windu's Episode 1 skin where he wears grey robes. Fun fact, he was going to have a blue lightsaber until Samuel L. Jackson requested a purple lightsaber so he and his family could keep track of him in the arena fight scene. Because of that, maybe the skin could come with a blue lightsaber because all of the official art of Mace Windu during Episode 1 has him with a blue lightsaber. It would be cool, although I'm not sure how canon Mace Windu's blue lightsaber is right now. Finally, we have a younger Mace Windu from the comics. It would work the same way as an Episode 1 skin for Obi-Wan and an Episode 2 skin for Anakin, but it would just be for Mace Windu. It would just be like Mace Windu as a Padawan with hair, but he wouldn't be that much younger. Overall, Mace Windu has five skins, and they're all pretty dope. I would like to see blue lightsaber gray Windu, Unless Blue Lightsaber isn't canon, let me know in the comments below. I'm sure you guys know. But if that's not the one, then I want Hair Windu from the comics. That would just be odd to see, but I would love it. I really would love How it. How pleasant of you to join us. This party's over. We're keepers of the peace, not soldiers. The oppression of the Sith will never return. You have lost. I am going to end this once and for all. For Mace Windu and future characters, I've decided to include an overall section right before my outro just to help to give a more clear idea of my intentions. I have to emphasize here that I am by no means a professional game designer, so the characters I make may or may not be overpowered or underpowered and need tweaking. I honestly believe that Windu is very strong and could definitely see him needing future tweaking and nerfing. The intention here is to design a hero tank that does not play like Darth Vader, but essentially does the same job. Windu doesn't have a lot of range on his attacks at all, and his attacks are all kinda slow. Therefore, I decided his attacks should be absolutely devastating and rip apart foes. In Galactic Assault, he would do his best on maps like Death Star, the final stages of Starkiller, Naboo, Kashyyyk, and on the inside of Kamino, where the firefights are closer range and more cramped. He would be the weakest on maps like Crate, Hoth, Indoor, and Jakku. These maps are great for snipers and ranged threats that Windu would have trouble getting to overall. It's worth noting here that his strengths on the Clone Wars maps were very much intentional. In Heroes vs. Villains, Windu would be a dominating tanky presence, much like Vader. Alongside Vader, the Jedi Master would take his place as one of the strongest duelists in the game. Unlike Vader, however, Windu directly counters the most frustrating meta in the entire game. Windu laughs in the face of stuns and will punish teams that simply rely on stunning enemies to, to kill people instead of using their skill to kill people. If DICE isn't going to fix this whole stunning problem in Heroes vs. Villains, I'm going to just make Heroes and Villains that I make in the future counter it just so it's not a problem. Thank you all again so much for watching the video. This was recorded and edited on Thursday, so if Obi-Wan and Grievous aren't in the announcement Friday, I have no idea. I'm expecting to see them in June, and if tomorrow confirms my suspicions, I mean today if you're watching this when it's uploaded, then you can expect an Obi-Wan character concept on Tuesday and a Grievous one on Friday. The poll will then determine not next Friday's character, but the one after that. I wanted to give you guys Grievous and Obi-Wan because they're requested so much, and I honestly just wanted to do them. The whole excuse not to was because I honestly believed that they would drop soon. Now I'm not believing that, so you're just going to get them both next week and get a double feature. In the poll today, you can get Anakin Skywalker, Qui-Gon Jinn, Count Dooku, Ahsoka Tano, Captain Rex, Grand Admiral Thrawn, Greedo, Admiral Akbar, IG-88, Kanan Jarrus, Snoke, Poe Dameron, or General Hux. Click like if you want to see more, subscribe to stay tuned to this series, join the Discord link in the description below to come hang with Nosy and friends, and follow me on Twitter if you just love me that much, the link is in the description below. Also, if you love Nosy just so much you want to help him out more, there is a poll 
or like the skin uh, Reddit in the description below. Go vote for Darth Maul without a shirt. I just, I want it so bad. And he's actually pretty close to winning the poll and getting in the top three. So I would just appreciate it so much if you went and showed some love for him. With all that said, I will see you guys in the next video.